free Lord let your love surround me Fly little bird Fly on Mensen van harte welkom uh, wederom bij uh, een interview. Mijn naam is Lilian Ferru en mijn gast voor vandaag is uh, Elisa Namaste. Welkom Elisa. Thank you. How are you? I'm feeling really good actually. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Can you shortly introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? Um, where do you come from? From Denmark I believe, right? Yeah, I'm born in Denmark. Okay. So. So, how are we gonna do this shortly? I am uh, basically, <laughs> I'm an energy form, mm -hmm. incarnated in a human body, as we all are, and I have the ability to become one with everything and allow that oneness to have a voice. So, if the stone and the water needs to talk, then I become one with it and I give it a voice. And you become one with it? Yeah. So, you do that also with humans? Yes, everything. You, you can become one with me, for example? Yes. How do you do that? With your mind, your consciousness? Uh, it's like... Um, <laughs> not my mind. So, if you go to your mind, everything stops. <laughs> no, it's, it's like... When you feel unconditional love, there is no borders. Because unconditional love is the essence of everything there is. Mm -hmm. So for me to be you is actually to be myself. And as I have absolutely no ego perspective of wanting to become you, I'm allowed to enter, if you can put it in that form. Yeah. So what I do is I become one with your heart. And then I feel how you're feeling from the inside. And I become the voice of what is unspoken. So many people... Um, don't always know how to listen to their heart, listen mm -hmm. to their inner self, and then I simply help them to hear that voice. So you say actually there is no distance between uh, you and me, we are connected, uh, you are light, I am light, here is light, we are all light, and if you want you can plug in or connect with whatever uh, with humans, animals, plants, yes. stones, etc. Everything is one and we are all incarnated light. So the only reason or the only difference between people are the emotional states and the vibration within their frequency that mm -hmm. makes the difference. And then we have the physical borders in this three dimensional world, five dimensional but on earth. <laughs> yeah. Um, and those physical borders, many uh, identities are staying within. Mm -hmm. because of the emotional layers and stuff like that. So that, that is the only thing that blocks you from being one with everything is your own perception and your ego self. So, um, do you believe that the body is a symbol for our belief of separation? Yes and no. <laughs> the body is a temple. The body is awesome. So for, uh, we call it God. Like, mm -hmm. for God to experience himself, he were incarnated in different forms, different shapes, the bodies, and also to contain the five uh, centers, the feeling and hearing and stuff like that. And the body makes that possible. So in order of expansion, we uh, designed the human form um, so we could feel, so we could have that kind of ex um, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot your question. Sorry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So, do you think the body is a symbol uh, of, separation. of our belief in separation? Yes, so then we create it. So we create that it is separating us. Actually, it's created to bring us once together. So if we are coming down in the physical body, believing that we are separated, um, we have all these emotional things and at some point it is all about coming back to oneness. One thing is to find it within yourself, another thing was the beauty in finding it within each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, not that one should fulfill the other, but the connection, man, woman, yeah. uh, friends, the heart connection, and that, you become one again. Mm -hmm. So it was created for 
this connection, but only in the order of understand true connection. One thing is being it, another thing is experiencing. So when we were just like, without physical borders, we always am. Let's just walk. Yeah. Happiness. Are you happy? I'm always happy. Are you love? I'm always love. How do you know you love? That's only love. You know. So <laughs> in order of experience that in a in a feeling in a vibration, we need to have a duality. Mm -hmm. So separation creates the feeling of oneness when you learn to sit in the love. Yeah, uh, duality is something that uh, belongs to the earth, but a lot of people are um, believing in non-duality. Beyond the good and the bad, there is another world where there is oneness. Yeah. And you can lift your consciousness up and see the world through different eyes. Because if you are a believer in duality and you believe the world is real, then you see always uh, good and bad and you are judgmental. This is Not this necessarily. You tell me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know that everything is one. Mm -hmm. I understand that and it's beautiful. To be me is to be you and to meet in the heart, there is nothing between. It's beautiful, yeah. everything is one. In order of us to expand, we need to have differences. Mm -hmm. You need to contain your vibration, I need to contain my vibration, the table needs to contain this vibration, this water needs to have the knowledge that it has in order of expansion of the self, in order of expansion of soul perspective gap, right? Mm -hmm. So we need duality for this. That means when we are incarnated here, I believe that here there's good and bad. I believe that that exactly that is what we need to rediscover the true feeling of oneness. Mm -hmm. So for me to be 100% me, then I am one with you when you're 100% you. But that doesn't mean that we are supposed to be the same. Mm -hmm. So if you take exactly your form, what you were sent here for by following your heart, and I do the same thing, and we are so different, then that's where we meet because then you're following your heart that means unconditional love highest perspective within your soul being i'm doing the same mm -hmm. and in that form we will meet in oneness yes if we're trying to become the same as we're incarnated here like non, non duality then you're not being true to your vibration i'm not being true to my vibration and then we cannot meet then we will meet in a fake reality mm -hmm. in suppression and denial and that is something some spiritual people uh, have misunderstand it. So they are kind of finding themselves, but no, everything is fun, everything is love, everything is light. And then they suppress this big part of themselves. They say, oh no, that's bad, there's non-duality, bad doesn't exist, everything is good. But a part of them are screaming, mm. are screaming, see me, see me, you don't know, acknowledge your emotions, I am here. Yeah. And, and that, uh, are, I'm making a lot of conflicts and they will keep attracting um, these conflicts, for example, because they are suppressing a part of themselves. If they embrace it, if they embrace everything, all their feelings, all their emotions, the anger, the pain, the, the tears, the happiness, the enthusiasm, everything, right? Yes. And allow them to be what they were sent here for. Mm -hmm. Then they become free, they can go to their heart, they're following their soul purpose on earth, mm -hmm. and then they're one, and then we are one. And then they are in their heart and, and can see clearly how to connect with everything. Yeah. Once again. Um, for me, non duality is more like a state of consciousness. Like, for example, uh, Jesus, he was in the world, but not from the world. Yes. And he walked the earth with his consciousness constantly connected with source, with um, connected with the voice in him. Uh, the Holy Spirit or with his father God mm -hmm. and he was here just to do only his will yes. right and he performed miracles because he saw the light in you so not the duality or the body he just looked in people's eyes and saw um, the perfect creation of light and that is what uh, healed also like the blind or uh, mm -hmm. yes so can you respond on that <laughs> um, Jesus 
<laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> so, yeah, two things. One thing, yes, he was incarnated just to see the life within anybody and said, and he literally said this, put your burden on my shoulder, I will carry it for you. Mm -hmm. I show you love, I will show you how beautiful and magnificent you are. Whatever you have, let it go, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. right? So there was two things. One thing is this is the most healing power in the world. When you realize how light you are, you will realize that everything around it is just a state of being, a state of mind. It's not who you are. And when you become conscious of exactly that, you can let go of it all. Step by step in your own symbol, of course, right? Yeah. The thing, <laughs> the but, I still love you, <laughs> is uh, by him saying, I take all of your shit on my shoulders, then you wanted to incarnate. You wanted to incarnate because you wanted to go through our emotional perspective. And you wanted to learn something and take that knowledge back home. Mm -hmm. With him removing it all without you learning what you came here to learn, yes, you it all come yeah. back. Oh, okay. So we had this talk <laughs> and I promised him that I will not take people's burdens on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I will show them love, I will look them in the eyes and I will tell them that they are perfect creation. I will tell them the things around them and how they themselves can deal with it. Yeah. So showing them the picture of their heart, showing them the true connection of unconditional love that we all need mm -hmm. and allowing them to go the path on their own. Yeah. Do you talk with Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. He's my friend. How do you do that? You see him, you have visions. Uh, for me, you hear a clear voice in your head. Or for me, it is the oneness. As I, uh, as I told you, that I'm just one with everything. And, and for me, I, I always felt I didn't belong on earth and I didn't know how to relate to parents. <laughs> yeah. So for me, he feels like a father. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I do stuff, uh, it's, it's just a feeling popping up like, well, I did this too. or you should probably not do that or, or something like that. So it's more, it's a feeling. For me, I feel everything. And um, not in an emotionally way, but in a vibrationally form. And what does that mean? Yeah, how, how do I explain? Explain, like <laughs> explain. Um, Yeah, how can I explain this? So the water is vibration, right? Mm -hmm. So when I see, I say, I feel the water, what I do is I become one with the water, I feel the frequencies in the water and how it vibrates. Mm -hmm. And then I start talking with the water, not with words, but like communicating in vibration. And then I most of the time ask the water if it's want to line up with my energy or whatever is running through me. And then it starts becoming more alive. So then it becomes happier. As the water becomes happier, it's a higher vibration. vibration yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. So in that form. Um, so that is feeling, but without emotions. Mm -hmm. When I feel Jesus, um, it's also the feeling. It's the feeling of who he is, uh, who he's representing, what he represents for the humankind. Um, emotionally, attachment to this is what he re uh, represents for me, which also just this love and, like I told, this father figure. Mm -hmm. That is also through feelings of vibrations, because everything is vibrating. Mm -hmm. And he is Christ consciousness, so as people are seeing this and feeding this vibration, this is the line of what he represents, and this is what I feel in a vibration when you match. And therefore it's not emotions, but it's feelings. Feelings. Yes. What about um, pain and suffering? Uh, do, do you That's also vibration. also connect with that? Or you say, no, that's not for me. Mm, I don't suppress anything. You just say, okay, you're welcome, whatever it is. Pain, um, love, um, light, darkness. I don't think, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes and no. So, <laughs> um, yes and no is my answer to everything. How do you explain this? Pain. Pain is awesome. Awesome? Pain is awesome. Well, you tell me about <laughs> this. Um, when you feel pain, it's because there's something within your system. For example, you do not listen to it, or something like a wake-up call. What is pain actually? We we are um, giving pain a name 
-hmm. But pain is many things. Pain can be fear. If you break something, what you actually feel is not pain. The pain is two seconds of, hey, something is wrong. And then there comes the fear. What is actually wrong? And then there is all the things which is creating around it. There is the protection system from your body. And after that, there is the fear of uh, the break being something bad. And then you think you feel pain. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the actually pain you feel is the last four seconds. Say that again. It <laughs> lasts like four seconds. So the, after that is the fear and the fear create pain. So if you put all your attention to your big toe mm -hmm. and you are in the belief that there's something wrong with your big toe, then if, if I just push like this, I'm going to stop and this will start feeling more and more and more because we keep attending the belief that there's something wrong with our toes and then we start feeling pain. But if I then tell you, you know, like little kids, oh, there's nothing wrong, it's just because I'm holding your toes. You give a kiss on it. Yes, and then you can let go of it. And mm -hmm. then you will re-realize that there's actually not pain, but there was just tension because of whatever suppression that might have appeared. You say actually a pain is a belief or it's it's not pain, but fear. Or from pain comes fear or fear is a start from pain, something like that. Right? It is um, pain is a warning system. Yeah. It is telling you, hey, something wake up. Uh, wake up or something you didn't listen to or hey, come back in your body. I have been through a lot of pain in my life yeah, because really? I fly out of my body constantly. So for me, pain became the the borders, my physical borders. When I feel pain, oh, I know I am in my body. So mm -hmm. I had to shift that to knowing. You can feel good in your body. You don't have to break something to know that you have a physical body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That took a while. Um, other kind of pain, for example, if you have energetic... Um, it's always a, a subject uh, that I'm a bit uh, vulnerable. We're going to check it out anyway. Cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cancer is, uh, for example, emotional uh, stuck, uh, stuck emotions. And it will it go back like this little ball of something that vibrates different than the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. Then you give it attention and you f all of a sudden feel the pain. Before you knew you had cancer, you, it, it wasn't painful. You just knew there was something. But now yeah. you know, then it's pain. What it actually is, is to suppress emotions. Um, also, because then the suppressed emotion become resonantly matched to some of the things, the influences from the outside. And it connects this mass. Um, so when you allow yourself to go down to feel what actually is there, be aware that you are not that, you are not your pain, you are unconditionally loved, mm -hmm. but your pain is just a voice because you did not listen to yourself. So then you allow yourself to give the center of yourself a voice. So be calm while you're there. And then by giving that a voice, you can start transforming it, translating, allow it through your system, open your perspective to see, well, um, I can give an example. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which body part are we gonna take? <laughs> Not my body. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Brigitte, her body. <laughs> <laughs> For example, um, oh, friend of mine has a colon problem, colon cancer. Yeah. What does that mean? Can you think? Oh, just think about her name. Just feel her. Him. Just feel him. Okay. So, from his perspective, it's because he has suppressed emotion in his system. He's actually very sensitive. He has not given himself the value of which he he needs. So, for a long time, he did not listen to himself, and in that time, he built up emotionally insecurity within himself. Um, he has also been in a better lifestyle in what he's developing to now and some of those vibrations come from his mom and his dad, his dad but mostly it links the genes from his father's side mm -hmm. so it's a part of that's a part of it he can also get rid of that and um, so what he can do in this now is that go into the belief that I can heal myself go into the belief <laughs> that whatever is within my physical body is a here and now state of being it's not the end outcome mm -hmm. so every day is a new chance to embrace life embrace life allow himself to feel the emotion of which is stuck within himself allow himself to feel the fear 
fear of life, the fear of not being a success, allow himself to feel the stress, the ethic, which is in his column, to put it up and say, yeah, I'm stressed out. I didn't listen to this, I didn't listen to that, I tried to work my ass off, and here I am. Okay, great, I fucked up, you know? She just let it all out. And then, from that perspective, but hey, I am freaking awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. From that perspective, I love that tree. And I really, really resonate with pineapples. So, first you allow the emotions to come up, like all the frequencies, so it's not stuck anymore, so you start vibrating in your inner. And then by exchanging some of that, you need new energy. So instead of filling it up with the same vibration, you link to something that resonates with love. You link mm -hmm. to something you are ready to resonate with. Something you believe you can resonate with. Like pineapples. <laughs> Do you believe that whatever disease somebody has, it can be cured? cured? Are you ready to my yes and no answer? Ah, <sighs> sure. <laughs> yes and no. So, every... Every deceit is man-made and we can be cured of it. Mm -hmm. Unless... But... Unless... Unless we chose to be incarnated to get this disease, to rise our consciousness level through having this disease, to feel unconditionally loved even that we are ill, or we are incarnated to be the example like the little kids who die of cancer yeah, before they are free yeah. or something, they choose to be incarnated to show the world there's something seriously wrong. So I incarnate for three years, I die of my disease, and I will be back incarnated later. Their soul don't uh, suffer anything at all. But uh, for us in a human form, it's a very strong picture. And we need strong pictures to wake up. Yeah. So these people uh, choose to be incarnated and die of their diseases. Everybody else... It's a choice. Yes. But you can feel it, because somehow, the whole energy is much lighter. They don't feel the heaviness of the disease in the same form. It's like you are the heavy person mm -hmm. watching that they are dying, right? And somehow they just they just know how to cope with it. And, and you don't even understand it. Like, how can you be so brave? How can you be so brave when you are so ill? I don't freaking get it, right? They are incarnated as this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful light being to be the example because it touches us yeah. and it touches us a lot because they are so beautiful and so pure and how can they of everybody be infected how can we kill them with the way we are treating our planet mm -hmm. so then they are serving their soul purpose within the heart yeah you are also a healer right yes <laughs> what does healing mean to you can you explain that what do you do what is healing um, well, for me, it's everything is love, mm -hmm. and it is when in my belief or within my soul path, I am not to manipulate energies. I'm not gonna remove something for somebody and leave a hole. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. The only thing I do when I light up with them, with all the angels, of course, <laughs> is um, allow the light to flow through me and flow in the other person. Allow the the heaviness of what they are ready to let go of to go out of this person mm -hmm. um, uh, and with that um, help them understand which sender they should look at. Mm -hmm. I don't do so many healings like uh, I'm gonna hold your feet until you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that but it is not it is not my path. Mm -hmm. For me it's just being. Everything is frequency. So me being here and sending out what I am I ever I am it's resonating with something within you yeah. that makes you see this part within yourself and that is, that is healing. Would you say that disease is um, dividing and healing is making two parts one? Um, so, for example, when people believe they are disconnected uh, from each other or from source and then or you create life. a lot of diseases yes so when you make two parts as one and you feel really connected with life and love then and source you can burn all the pain away yes yes yeah. so the thing is we man got an ego for a purpose mm. so for, for many many years ago <laughs> We, were, we created this ego because ego helped us develop. If we always knew that we connected, then there would be no frequency, there would be no interference, and we needed that in order of soul perspective to source, see himself in other forms. 
And within this now, this ego has overtaken such a big role on yeah. the planet mm -hmm. that so many uh, are disconnected and in their search for connection, they find it uh, through forms which make them more disconnected. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the sex is industry. Yes. Let's talk bring about the sex! Yeah. yeah, so the right person for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual contact. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. Was in pure form created to um, to transform and embrace and increase healing within oneself. So Jesus, for example, with Maria Magdalena, did these rituals, and they did it in the form of where you see the the Kundalini. Yes, mm -hmm. but in a pure form. That means that when they link together in sexual uh, active thingy, then they go together into oneness. So they mm -hmm. become one, and that feeling of unconditionally love are vibrating on such a high level that it helps heal everything within them. Mm -hmm. What man did was they customized it, right? So then it becomes this animal thing where when you see when you see this form of sexual contact, it is an ego game. So it is to reach this few seconds of <sighs> inside, right? And within that um, there is not the flowing energy, there is an ego energy going up and down and there is in the other one like trying to increase the energy but it's not flowing through mm -hmm. and within that you keep searching because then you got this little taste of unconditional love which actually is what we see but because we not completely know how to link it in our mind mm -hmm. yet then you get two seconds of unconditional love Poof! and then it's gone mm -hmm. And then you keep searching that state of being over and over and yeah, over again. The porn, for example, yes. or well, the m most crazy things people can do with sex, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you, oh, but I just want to experience things. And that is so awesome. Everybody mm -hmm. should experience whatever they want, whatever they feel they need to find themselves. But the underlying thing is they want to experience unconditional love. They want yeah. to feel true connection. Sure, yeah. And what is the closest they get to true connection is what they search. People who are addicts, they have have had maybe miserable life, don't know how to link to emotional system of love. Maybe they didn't have it in their childhood. Then they do drugs and they open all their senders and they're like, oh, I feel, I don't know what I feel, they feel love. So then the next day, they like, boom, back to world reality, right? Mm -hmm. And they can't stand being in that. So then they go back and back and back. If you take this person out of the whole druggy thingy, and you show them love, you show them unconditional love. Well, first they will burn a lot because of all this oppressed stuff and blah, 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 yeah. right? <laughs> Can't help it. But when they start realizing they are love, they have no need to find it within drugs mm. because they are. I have two questions. I love you always has two. <laughs> to, to, to listen, uh, the Kundalini, for example, mm -hmm. huh? um, we hear also stories about twin flames and soulmates, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, you tell me something about that. And plus, <laughs> the second question before I, I forget it is, what do you think about, for example, ayahuasca or um, DMT or ecstasy? Yes, you so, have to ask me one thing at the time because yeah. I have no memory whatsoever. Yeah. Because I forget my question also. Awesome. Like, oh, what? We are the greatest team ever. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> interview. Yes. <laughs> we just said it. Beep. <laughs> we start with the Kundalini. Yes. And the twin flame energy. Is that true? Does that exist? Or what is your opinion? On yes that? and no. <laughs> yeah. So everything is energy and you are linked to different world perspectives within the life that you chose to live. For some people, are they incarnated in the belief that they have to find the soulmate because that is within their soul contract? Mm -hmm. For them, twin twins exist. It's true, yes. for them. For them. For others, they are incarnated to be unconditionally loved maybe, and they have a lot of soulmates, they can re recognize people for their own soul groups, but they don't have one they have to link up with. The only one they have to re-realize who are is oneself. Because within that self of oneness, you are one with everything. Mm -hmm. So you don't need another person to fulfill you because you are fulfilled within yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Within this case, twin flames have absolutely no value. No value. No, just pure confusion. 
just confusion. Confusion. Yes. So it's because we perceive the world in different perspectives, and mm -hmm. which is needed for the development as well. Uh, so there is no right and no wrong, which also makes it more complicated, yeah. right? But for some people, and I, when I look in their um, soul agreements, they have this belief and they have this um, agreement to find this twin flame. And when they does, it's amazingly beautiful. So yes. I understand them why many people are seeking this. And if they feel not fulfilled within themselves, they will seek it even more. Oh, it's because I missed my twin flame, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my uh, advice is to search inside of yourself, find out which center within you needs to be healed. So you mm -hmm. are one within yourself. And when you are at that state, then look, then see, be open. Okay. Before we go into the ayahuasca, we stay just a little bit with the twin flames and sex. Yes. Is it possible to have astral sex? What? Yeah. How do you mean this? <laughs> Out of the physical body? Yeah. Why would you want it? I don't know. It's not my thing, but that's a story that comes to me. Is, is it possible? Does it exist? Do you know anything about this? And I'm just going to shift perspective two seconds. <laughs> no. It's not possible. It's well, fantasy, you say. You need... To, okay, so I'm going to shift perspective into one of these persons, right? This person are to... Exp oh, this person really wants to experience something deep within. And it can it cannot get deep enough. And within the physical body, it's, it's boring. So there's this uh, suppressed anger uh, of I don't want to be in this physical. This is not enough. It's not fulfilling enough. I want to feel more and more bigger, more <gasps> out of this earth reality, right? Cause <gasps> and then uh, in that creation, they want to feel it on a different level. So what they actually feel is this. Um, what is that? Oh, what is that word? Uh, ecstash, ecstash, feeling of complete ecstash, right? Like this. Ecstasy. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So the the like, uh, the sexual bliss, bliss. Yes, sexual ecstasy on a, a different level, like astral plane. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, what they want to experience is unconditional love. When ego wants to experience unconditional love, it transforms it into different kind of feelings. So they have something with the sexual energy, mm -hmm. and then linking it together with that. Okay. If you want to heal something within yourself, you can do it. Ah, yeah, of course, this perspective as well. So, <laughs> you have this client who has sexual traumas. You cannot enter this client physical, physical, right? Mm -hmm. But you can heal it on an astral level, so then you can have create sex on an astral plan to heal this trauma within this person. In that vibrational, uh, that vibration, it becomes a match for the healing within that person. In that form, you can make sex on astral level. But in the, the form, um, yeah, that is my answer. Okay, <laughs> um, a lot of people, friends of mine, uh, they uh, ceremonies with ayahuasca and that is also a kind of um, traveling into um, the astral world and they have visions and they see a lot of things and colors and they feel connected etc etc it's the question is I love this. <laughs> is it a hallucination or is it a real traveling with with the mind or the consciousness and also, is it a medicine or is it a drug or is it dangerous? Everything is what we make it. As nature created it, it was a medicine. As nature created it, it was a tool. It was a tool for humanity to reconnect with the higher self, to reconnect with source energy. So in that time, we had uh, shamans who was called mm -hmm. by the spirits, who really knew how to guide people and help them through this process with this tool. It was never created to be a static thing you do over and over again. It yeah. was created just once? As a, no, it takes the time that you need. Some people need it once, other people need it longer. Mm -hmm. But you have to be honest to oneself and not just do the seeking, the feeling free, but actually using it as the tool it was created for. So it was created as a medicine and a tool. 
Mm -hmm. At some point, you are capable of reaching this state of bliss within yourself, and especially in this time, because this this was created a long, long years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. where we needed it, because we yeah. were disconnected in another form. Now the vibration on Earth is really high again, mm -hmm. so we are capable of creating this within ourselves. Yeah. We create. We are capable of uh, feeling absolutely bliss without traveling uh, universally, dimensionally, astral, whatever. Without needing anything, yes. All right. Anything, yeah. everything you can heal from yourself, inside of yourself, yeah. yes. Thank you, that's totally what I think. Really. Uh, but I have something more to say about this. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> because many people now are using it, because it does yeah. help some people to see things clearly. But as you enter the Iowa, I becomes one with you. If you are not in your heart, you travel out, see different things that can be linked to your thoughts, that can be linked to your fears, that can be linked to um, other energies within the room that are vibrationally matched to enter whatever field that is created within yourself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you see things and believe this is the truth. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is the truth. Yeah, it's an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. a, it can a hallucin be. Hallucination. It, it can be a creative fantasy or it can be a, a different universe which is not linked to you here now, but just it's a glimpse of the universe as it is. Mm -hmm. But as you don't learn how to transform it and mm -hmm. you don't learn how to integrate it within your here and now state of being, it is not beneficial for you. Yeah, thank you. So. Those who use it as a tool, who have shamans that is willing to sacrifice a big part of their life <laughs> to guide these people through the process. Mm -hmm. And if you feel drawn to it, please do it. Yeah. If you are using it in a form where you feel, I have to do this, I have to do it, I are the, are the only answer, you are not doing it in a beneficial way mm -hmm. and you will get lost. Yeah. So really important for people to listen to their heart and when they do it, don't do it to travel out to experience all the universe. When you're dead, you know, you got it all. Yeah, exactly. So, well, yeah. Why be so pussy? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> be patient. Yes. Well, <laughs> and um, so if you, if you truly want to experience the whole universe, seek inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. You are the universe. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And when you seek in there, I can help you. Mm -hmm. If you seek out there, I is messing with you. Yeah. Yeah, because it can be traumatic also, uh, yeah. like seeing things, uh, demons or the hell or mm -hmm. fears or you laying in a grave and it, it's closing down or something like that. So that is not for fun. No, and, and it's good, it's good to face your fear, but you have to be open and ready to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it will, when, when it's IO, when we use um tools like this is important that there's somebody to help you through the process yeah who actually know what they're doing so a real shaman yes. you say speaking about the universe mm. do you believe in a uh, life in the universe like uh, aliens aliens of extraterrestrials uh ufo spaceships um yes i do <laughs> So we are all different beings, right? We yeah. are incarnated in physical bodies. Somebody, when I meet them, I see them, oh, I met you on that planet, hey, I saw you on that planet. So that form, um, I see those who have also been incarnated in different dimensions and mm. stuff like that. UFO, yes, so our world reality is a lot bigger than our perspective allows us to see. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, the UFOs are also here and now they are appearing more and more. Yeah. Which is really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hide anymore from humanity. So that's nice. Um, yeah. And in energetic forms, energetic forms, there is all kind of beings at the same time, at the same place, always. So even. Uh, you can call them aliens or you can call them angels or there's all kind of energetic beings around you always somebody sees them somebody feels them somebody needs to see them and then they're there mm -hmm. but see them or not they are always there it's just if you are vibrationally matched to it or not can you travel to a spaceship like my husband does
I love you. <laughs> um, I I am not doing it in the same form he is now. Not at all. Um, I I can I can be a reson resonant res res I can resonate with it and I can be there and I can see it from his perspective, but it's not a part of my path to do it in the form he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what is a miracle to you? Life. Life is the miracle. It is. So, what many of these aliens <laughs> don't understand is the heart system. Yeah. It's the heart system. And what they try to do is they try to make it artificially out of a gold and uh, some other formal thingies. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the names, but I can see it. <laughs> Um, and it's not working. So they also even try to plant it in the DNA to create the heart system artificially. The heart system is what links us together. The heart system is unconditionally love. The heart system on Earth in physical bodies is what makes them do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Where they out of the planet will look like, why does he do that? It's not a vibrational mass. Why does he keep running after? It? That's weird. Like, huh? What's going on? Family? Why do? Why would you sacrifice your own vibration for that? It doesn't matter. I don't get it. Right? Yeah. That's magic. The heart system. Being mm -hmm. alive. Life is magical. Okay. Um, well, what do you think about the situation right now on Earth? <laughs> uh, you would say. When you look around, that a lot is going on, for example, with Trump and all... Even if you don't look, you still feel it. <laughs> yeah, the stuff, you know. You, would you say the heart of the earth or the people is open or closed or... Um, skip that question. <laughs> what is happening? So, in order of the world to wake up, Mm -hmm. We have the duality, right? Yeah. As the vibration is rising on Earth, people are getting ready to break up. That means that, let's call it the bad influence on Earth, want to keep us low. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. So you believe that there's a power outside that wants to control the people on Earth? It's also inside. Like the Illuminati and all that stuff. I do believe they exist here on this planet, yes. So the thing is, the Illuminati has a vibration, right? Mm -hmm. the Illuminati has a vibration which is not linked to the heart system. They are only allowed to interfere if you are a vibration only matched to us, them. So you go lower, so yes. you do this. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the highest vibration will always win. There's nothing above unconditional love. Unconditional love is what we are made of. It's the light. It's mm -hmm. the essence of everything there is. Yeah. And Illuminati is a creation <laughs> okay, so we have Source Energy that was created five sources under that. These sources have different vibrations in order of creating mm -hmm. the underlying dimension yeah, yeah, all yeah. the way down. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of these sources is like the dark source. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it differently. Um, which was created for a purpose. So that means he's still underlying unconditionally love. So Illuminati are not a vibrational match if you appeal love. Mm -hmm. So it can affect you if you stay high in your love vibration, in your light consciousness, yes. if you stay centered. Without with fear. Yeah. So, for example, I am so much out of balance, so often. Seriously. Sometimes I'm not even aware I have a body. I can be completely fucked up. Who are you? Me. But. What went wrong? <laughs> nothing. I am unconditionally loved. Yes. I am no vibration on the match to Illuminati or these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm vibrational in match to a breaking food or something because I need to learn how it is to be physical mm -hmm. and to set borders. I know that I'm unconditional love. What I send out is love, there's nothing else. There's no just mentality thingy. Um, but in order to stay within my high vibration, I have to embrace everything that is when it's there. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like I've self esteem or I feel really confused, I will tell you. I'll be, seriously, I'm so confused by that. I don't know. Shit, you know? Yeah. So that is embracing whatever emotional state there is. And by doing that, I'm not controlled by it. Mm -hmm. I have fear. I have shit, a lot of fear. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. But I walk through it every time. Mm -hmm. And when I walk through it, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. 
Oh yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Once again, nothing happened. You go through the illusion of fear. And back to the center yeah. of unconditional love. Yeah. So my point is, do not fear not being centered, mm -hmm. but embrace it. So when you are allowing yourself to be all out of center, <laughs> then you don't fear it. And when you don't have the fear upon being out of center, you are centered. Mm -hmm. So even when everything is chaos, you are centered. Yeah. Uh, and I say this because when I'm about to say now is that yes, when you're centered within yourself, you unconditionally love, you know my very soon will match for the evil that is surrounding you. Mm -hmm. That means it cannot interfere within your system. If it goes in, it goes straight through your body mm -hmm. because you don't link to it. But if you are in the fear of not being a vibration only mass and therefore you have to stay high, I have to stay high all the time, all the time, then you're suppressing a big part of yourself mm -hmm. and then you exactly become this vibrational mass of which you do not wish to become. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trick universe, I kind of love it though. <laughs> yeah. You say you have to get used to be in a body, right? Yes. Where do you come from? Do you know that? I'm source, incarnate, source energy incarnated in a physical body. From which planet, please? <laughs> Just source. 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 So you go straight from source. Yes. <laughs> I always uh, have tried. I, I have to learn to say this without feeling you're not allowed to say it. You can so say <laughs> it right now. You can practice for the camera. I'm <laughs> practicing. What I am is source energy incarnated in a physical body. That doesn't mean that I don't have troubles or are confused or feeling like of self-esteem. All these things is following up when you are on planet Earth. Yeah. I have been incarnated on many planets as well as, as you. Mm -hmm. Always you. nice to see you again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you make me curious. I know. And um, we have She's a teaser. <laughs> we need that. Or is it going to be too serious? So I'm <laughs> Um, so, the memories of which we hold within our, our physical, within our soul perspective is the memories of where we have been. And when we're here, we need to remember whatever is formed, what we need to do here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, many people have memories of Syria. Syria, yeah. Syria or yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, exactly. and all that. Yes. Yeah. Because the systems and the things of which was created there, some of it is good, some of it would slightly bad. So we are reincarnated here to do what is already done. I know I have to say it like that, but to make sure that the outcome here is more beneficially for the development on Earth and therefore the whole balance in the universe within this now. Mm -hmm. yes. You say that noise. Thank you. Can I ask you a personal question? All you want. What does your tattoo mean with the eye? Because people may think it's, it's Illuminati. Yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. Yes. So, long, long. Can you explain what the symbolic meaning is from the all seeing eye between your breast? <laughs> I will love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, the all seeing eye. Centuries ago, this meant that I see you purely, it's, it's the eye of God, or the eye of you and me, because we are mm -hmm. God, everybody is, right? So it means that my soul is seeing your soul purely, there is nothing else. And yeah. within the pyramids, it's because all the pyramids is linked to this unconditional energy flow of which was created in this world reality when all the pyramids was aligned. So within that, there is the essence of what I am here for basically to help us to come back to unconditionally love within ourselves mm -hmm. and on our planet. What Illuminati does is it takes everything which is pure, not everything because it's not possible, what it tried to do yes. <laughs> is take some of these, these things we worship as something beautiful, shift it into something of which we will fear, so therefore we won't feel the power of this simple because we now feel the fear of it. So it is a trick, you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm simply flipping it back over. Okay. So I'm planting the Illuminati, illuminated means of lighting, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. planting it in the center because its vibration it should be in the center, but it meant to be in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, to shift it around, to show, well, I'm not bad. I love you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm just here to represent love. And therefore I placed it there. Mm -hmm. Infinity is because everything will always remain. Yeah. Our physical body will shift into different forms, different beings, our soul will go, go back 
transform and come back into our new physical form where we want to go next time. But everything always is. Mm -hmm. So, what can people do if they want to uh, contact you for uh, answering questions, or healing, a seminar, a lecture, or whatever you do? You do a lot, right? Hey, huh? Yeah, I do a lot. <laughs> Want to be bored, right? <laughs> Not on earth. Nee. Doe me niet aan. Nee, dat nee. doe me niet. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just finished uh, my website. Okay. So everything, my agendas um, and where uh, seminars will be. And if they want to book me for a seminar, they just go into uh, my website. You live here? In the Netherlands? Yeah. Yes, I do. You want in the Netherlands? Oh, right now, this moment, I want in the Netherlands. Okay, the volgende keer praat ik in the Netherlands. Find a picture, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So, just check the website. Huh? Yes. Right? For whatever you want from Elisa or want to give her also something. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy. It's elisanamaste.com. Yeah. So, I'll write it down. Run, write it down. <laughs> yeah. So, what is your final uh, message to the viewer? Do you have to say, do you want to say something like, this is important for me and also for uh, people who are watching? Yeah. The most important thing is accepting yourself exactly how you are within this now. And allow yourself to Embrace whatever it is, knowing that the thoughts in your brain is only a temporary state and the true feeling within your heart will always guide you to exactly what you're here to do. So just be you and when you are you, you are doing exactly what you came here for and then together we can all meet on the same level and from that we can create heaven on earth. Um, so let's stand to let's stand in ourselves, <laughs> standing together to create a world we actually want to be a part of. Now that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. One more thing, one last thing. Uh, birds are a birds? sound. Yeah, birds, a sound from heaven. Yes. You know that? Mm -hmm. Well, since we are talking, I hear like an orchestra of little birds singing and talking etc etc what does that mean all the birds mm. they're happy they are feeling the vibration of which is flowing of course from the sun but also for what if is created within this now so they are communicating on on a vibrationally level where they feel a vibrationally match to what what they're sending out they some of them are also a uh, pairing up mm -hmm. <laughs> So then they're doing that communication. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's quite funny actually. Yeah, so, so mostly it's joy. It's joy and connection. And as they feel more at ease around this area, they tend to come here. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you for coming. So namaste, welcome. namaste. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> En u ook dank uh, voor het kijken en uh, uh, hopelijk ook geïnspireerd door Elisa en ook door de vogeltjes. En uh, thank you again. En u ook. Tot de volgende keer. Dankjewel. Tot ziens. Thank you. Fly little bird. Fly free. Lord let your love.